Hi, this is Rod Roick from Roick Knows Podcast. Helping you become a better you. Well, what's all the rage today? The rage is AI. What is, what is AI and how is it gonna affect our healthcare, our beauty? Well, I have the privilege of having an amazing facial plastic surgeon with me that actually knows a lot about AI and uh, we're gonna talk about that in rhinoplasty. A couple of my favorite topics. So Dr. K, tell us a little bit about why you got interested in AI and how do you think it's gonna change our lives in cosmetic medicine and cosmetic surgery? Well, Rod, I am an early adopter of new technology. You and always, I never have, you always have been. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I've, well, I've tried. I want to stay up to date with these things. There is no way that in our lifetimes, AI is not going to be so important to the practice of medicine and to daily life for all of us. If you think five years from now, AI is going to be super prevalent in all the industry. So it was my mission to learn about AI, and I wanted to see what's going on with it in healthcare and in aesthetics. And AI, artificial intelligence, it's here to stay. If anyone thinks that it's not here to stay or they're scared of it, like you better wake up and smell the coffee. It's like not getting on Instagram in the beginning phases. Like you you don't need to wait five years to know this is a real trend. Right. So I'm spending a few hours a day just dabbling and trying all the AI pro programs that are out there. And I'm super interested in the use of it in patient care. So um, that's what that's what triggered my interest. So tell me, you know, actually, I'm helping you with the study that we're doing on AI and rhinoplasty. So I, I totally agree with you. I mean, AI is here to stay. I know Elon Musk wants to kind of hold back a little bit, but of course, sometimes he says that, and sometimes he means it, and sometimes he doesn't. But uh -huh. I, I agree with you. It it's here to stay. And plus, all it does is it puts our brain on fast track and allows us to do things that would take us hours to do or weeks. And I think it's fantastic. And one of them is patient selection for rhinoplasty. You know, rhinoplasty is the hardest operation we do in all of uh, plastic surgery. And it's also the most challenging to pick the right patient. Don't you agree? I definitely agree. And um, we've been looking at the use of AI for two different models. So one is for body dysmorphia patients for screening and like finding those warning signals before they even get to your office because they've interacted on you know, a di digital level with either a chat bot or an AI assistant that's on your website. So AI for body dysmorphia can be a really great tool. And then AI for preoperative and postoperative counseling of rhinoplasty patients, wonderful. Like you said, rhinoplasty is popular, but it is one of the hardest surgeries that I think I do. And I'm sure I, need, I would love to have your level of experience with all the books you've written and the procedures you've done. But this is a hard procedure to do, and patients have this expectation now of Instagram perfection and filter perfection. So going into surgery to be able to give them really sound, detailed advice, AI is a perfect match. These large language models can answer with empathy, they answer with detailed and accurate facts, and they give really great guidelines to patients in the way that sometimes a modern practicing surgeon like you or myself but we may not have the time to do like and right. you're so empathetic you the, this will never replace the human consult um there's so many things in the in-person interaction that are critical like just the touch on the shoulder the warm handshake the eye contact the little sense of humor seeing hesitancy in a patient's eyes like there's no computer that'll ever replace any of that giving someone reassurance this is the human touch but the ai is so great for all the practical questions right the right. things that you, you might feel dumb as a patient to ask some super basic thing but you really need to know the answer you know what medicines to avoid two weeks prior to surgery ai is there and these answers are immediate it's so empathetic, like it writes at a level that you and I don't have time for because it's very, very much using the language of millions of people harvested down. So many people over the last hundred years have written about rhinoplasty. Imagine culling that all down. Yep. Oh, we had her freeze. Oh, so what did we do? Hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, no, it's fine. It's just, uh, we just had you. You can just continue what you were saying. We'll just cut that. You out. just said you uh, imagine calling all that down. I mean, just I mean, okay. That's yeah. all. Yeah. 
Um, imagine being able to cultivate those years of human right. knowledge about rhinoplasty into, you know, kind of a, a knowledge base where any question can be answered with that depth and complexity. So that's the strength of AI is so efficient and has such a large database and we can train it too. Right. No, I like it. And I think it's great screening. I mean, in that small study we did, I think it's great screening for body dysmorphic syndrome, which is really a challenge because some patients you know, you have to make sure they understand what what you can do and what you can't do. And I think AI can help us with that. I mean, you're right, nothing can replace the human touch, that eye-to-eye -eye contact and all the things you talked about. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm starting to use it for more post-op care because so many times people need to be reiterated on this is what you need to do. Because as you and I know, my patients get it, they get it on the website, they get it in person, they get it, but they just, it's hard for them to remember it. So AI kind of gives them that remembrance and they can always resort back to it. And how are you using it in your practice or starting to? Well, so with that idea, it's going to be on our new website. Um, definitely we'll have a chatbot function um, where people who want to ask quick questions will get those kind of quick answers. I think as a screening tool, when a patient comes in and they're interested in a rhinoplasty, to run them through a series of questions, like maybe they're a better candidate for a liquid rhino, maybe for a surgical, right. maybe not at all because they're fully unrealistic. So that's a great screening tool. Um, we're using Quantificare and some image analysis systems, which I think that's the next step. We're, right now we have the technology to photograph a patient and Photoshop how we predict their nose to, to turn out or how we would like it to turn out. But I think that we are headed to a time where AI can scan the face, look at facial volumes, look at muscle strengths, and give you literally doses, quantities of filler that can be used uh, look at muscle movement and tell you how many units of toxin to place. So that that's the Star Trek next generation of a facial scanner that's going to spit out a formula and a recipe and a skincare regimen and give you like an ideal aesthetic. Yeah, I've, I've actually looked at some of those too. How accurate do you think they are today? I mean, on, on predicting how much dosage you need, because that would be, that's truly phenomenal. Yeah, I think they're so accurate because actually the machine learning has done the work of looking at a million faces and determining yeah. like, to take away sadness or unhappiness, what muscle groups you treat. Me as a physician, I might look at a sad face and say, well, I'm going to treat, you know, the furrow because they're yeah. worried up here. And the, the, actually the computer's going to tell me to treat the depressor <laughs> angular or muscle with this many units. And the computer has a better outcome because they've already seen that outcome. So my interpretation of sadness or anger on a face is going to be so different and not as accurate as a machine that's learned on million faces. Like me in 20 years, I've machine learned myself. <laughs> and right. so have you by looking at patient after patient and you train yourself. So that's the benefit of going to an experienced provider, but we can 10X that now. Wow. And that's gonna be so cool to be able to know like this set of expressions with this set of muscle contraction forces needs this treatment to optimize and myomodulate, right? So I predict that someday happening, but surprisingly there's very little technology right now in facial aesthetics to do any of this other than how currently we can scan the face and create a custom implant that's kind of like the most advanced thing I've seen. Right. Other than maybe skin analysis that tells you, you know, red, brown, and pigmented spots how to treat. Um, have you seen anything more forward thinking? No, I haven't either. I mean, I've seen the dosage yeah. analysis uh, uh, plans, and I, I think I'm, intri I'm, I'm intrigued by that, but also um, they do automatic follow ups and they call the patient and have them come back. And, you know, if there's an area that they still want to have improved. So, I mean, that's all great because that's that's time and motion that you don't need to do. And yeah. I'm really interested in, in, you know, the analysis and planning for surgery. I think mm -hmm. that's fantastic, especially for rhinoplasty because it's so different in every patient. And yeah. to use that power, which would be, you know, our experience and then be able to just teach it. But I worry about people not learning it if they can get it online. Oh my gosh, I worry yeah. about who's going to take care of us when we're old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, gonna we're going to have an, it's gonna, it's gonna, an intern who rounds with an iPad who like sends a robot in the room and God help us. <laughs> right. Well, no, I, I did too. And, and, you know, I think they should be, you know, it should be AI augmented outcomes because I think AI helps us. I mean, I think especially 
you know, uh, if, if you're just starting out in medicine or in plastic surgery, I mean, I think it can be augment your outcomes and your ability to treat patients, don't you think? I, because you can yeah. get, you're in my experience, uh, probably from day one almost, part of it, part of it, not all of it. And I think that's what people, um, I think we should embrace, just like, you know, we have to embrace change. If we're not part of change, we're loose change. We're done. I mean, we have to um, embrace it. And I, and I agree with you. And I think AI is only as good as you see it and use it. And uh, we, it's, it's, it's here to stay. Just like, you know, social media, everything else. I mean, it's yeah. a way that people now are embracing it. I mean, my kids love it. I mean, they, they embrace it. I mean, universities have been transformed. You know, I just talked to one of my friends recently who's a lawyer, teaches at a major law school, and they've stopped all essays. Wow, that's crazy. In law school, because you know why? <laughs> because There's too much chat GPT writing essays. <laughs> yes, so now they do oral interactions. Wow, so, you know. I that's guess. so much better, actually, because you can perceive what a person knows. You can't fake that too often. No, I know, and, and of course in medicine, you know, we, we've always had the, the live interaction, but not in other disciplines. Yeah. But, yeah, I think so, in, this, in this day and age, like if you haven't yet tried ChatGPT, you, you need, need to. You need to download it. You need to get the paid version. It's 20 bucks a month. It's fully worth it. You need to try five or 10 plugins and just see what works in your practice. Like you said, it's so good for marketing. Literally, it can help you create a marketing plan. It can help you with um, patient recall and retention. So there's so many arms of what it can do. It just really amplifies and energizes your practice. Like yeah. I can use, I have interns and students who work with me who write blog posts and in the time it takes to ask someone to write a four paragraph blog post on neocollagenesis, I mean, I can write it in 30 seconds in a form that's quite good. It may not be an A plus, but it's definitely gonna be a solid B. I agree. You know? And then yeah. you just tweak it. You tweak yes. it, and then it becomes, you know, you. It becomes your personal Dr. K blog. And, and I agree. You know, I'm starting to use that more and more. I haven't used it in my, you know, obviously in scientific publications as, you know, a, an editor of a journal. It's hard to, you can't really distinguish it. I mean, it, but it helps you get to, you know, first, second, sometimes third base. And uh, it's pretty amazing. It's, and it is transformational. So I agree. Wise words from Dr. K on AI and cosmetic medicine and cosmetic surgery, and especially rhinoplasty. So it's truly been a pleasure to have you with us. I mean, you have incredible insight and really a, a lot of expertise. And I, I think you're absolutely right on on AI. Uh, we need to embrace it. And we need to, if we're not in the for, if we're not in the forefront, we're going to be in the foreground. And none of us want to be that so thanks again and don't forget to tune into her amazing podcast as well and uh, i look forward to seeing you soon thank you so much rod take that's care. it for now guys right, take care bye-bye